Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, in this talk, uh, we, uh, it's very special. We have a Japanese speaker, but he's on site and can uh, directly uh, uh, talk to us. And for uh, this session, uh, is a hack the real box and analyze of multiple campaign by APT41 subgroup Earth, uh, Earth, Long. Earth Long Z. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because APT41 is a very famous group and become much and much compli uh, complicated and larger. So it gives us to do the CTI when we do the threat intelligence, it makes a lot of trouble. So to divide this big group, APT41, into more details uh, subgroup and uh, do a more detailed analysis. It's very requirement research. So today, uh, they will uh, give our, uh, introduce uh, this, sub, uh, this subgroup of APT41 and introduce their TTP. And our two speaker, uh, the first one uh, is Hiroaki Hara. Yeah, he's a, um, a researcher from Tremicro, and we also had uh, Ted Lee, he's also a researcher from Tremicro. So let's uh, uh, pass a time to learn uh, for this presentation. So let's uh, welcome their presentation. Uh, hello, uh, good morning everyone. Um, um, today uh, we are going to share in our re recent research on the subgroups of the AB41. So um, um, let's uh, briefly talk about us. So um, I'm Ted Lee. I'm currently the uh, three researchers in Tramicro Taiwan. So uh, my best, my uh, research is mainly focused on the APAC best uh, uh, AVD incidents. And so, uh, Hassan, do you want to introduce yourself to okay. our audience? Okay. Uh, hello, Dr. Hao. Um, I'm Hara. Uh, I'm, I'm a third researcher at Tramicro Japan. So uh, I usually uh, work in Japan, so uh, I'm super happy to be here physically. So um, anyway, um, I also do our uh, third intelligence research, especially on uh, APAC regions. And I do our third hunting, uh, incident response, and malware analysis, whatever. And uh, uh, I, I like to think about our new malware naming. So uh, we are excited to be here to share our new malware. Thank you. OK. So. Okay, so here's the, uh, the uh, today's the sharing will uh, be uh, three parts. The first part, we're talking about uh, who is the Earth Long Z. Um, and second part is uh, because uh, uh, when we are uh, investigating the, the Earth Long Z, we found there's a two campaign in different time, time, time periods. So we were talking about more de details about these two campaign. And third one, uh, we are uh, uh, sure, uh, introduce uh, how how we uh, attribute this group to uh, is related to the uh, AVD41 groups. Okay. okay, first section: Who is the Earth Lonzi? So um, uh, we believe the Earth Lonzi is a subgroup so, uh, of the AVD41, or is the highly correlating with entity with the AVD41. So, because uh, uh, we found some relationship with the uh, uh, with the some uh, subgroups in of the AB41, which is just uh, be revealed last year, uh, is the Earth Baku and the group CC. Um, Earth Baku is just uh, is also our research uh, last year, and the group CC is uh, published by the Team T5. And okay, so and. In, for the Earth Long Sea, their target we found their targeting sectors is uh, is including uh, some uh, defense and uh, aviation sectors. Uh, in uh, basically the in the country impact countries uh, in the APEC region. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so uh, because as you know, AV41 is quite is a very huge uh, hacking groups. So uh, and. Based on the motivation, we could classify it as a two different uh, uh, subgroups, uh, different uh, subgroups. So today, uh, we are going to talk about the Earth Long Z is belongs to the espionage uh, hacking subgroups. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about uh, what we found in the two different campaigns. So this table is an overview of the two different campaigns. So in the ca campaign one, that is, uh, it started from the uh, May 2020 to the last February. So 
his uh, target region is uh, mainly targeted uh, uh, government and uh, infra infrastructure and healthcare related organization in Taiwan. And most interesting part is that there is also a banking industry in China also uh, be their targets. Yeah. As for the campaign, uh, and the attack vector is um, they there's two different approach, but men. But in most cases, they are using a spear phishing attachment to deploy their malware. So, and the tools using the uh, campaign one is a uh, they just uh, develop a customized custom loader. We call it a simultic loader, and and try and use it to uh, load the Cobo, the payload Cobo Strike. And we also found the interesting hack tools. Uh, we call it all in one, uh, which means. Uh, he just combined all of all necessary files he wants um, in a one execute executable. Yeah. As for the campaign two, uh, it's, it's start, uh, we found it uh, started from the, at least uh, last August till uh, this June. So the victim uh, is quite similar to the campaign one, and also government. But, but now uh, we found they are, there are a new targets is the defense and the aviation industry. And the impact region is uh, expand to the uh, APAC region, yeah. Uh, attack vector is also the same as uh, the campaign one. As, and let's look at the, uh, uh, the tools in using the campaign two. You, you, can, you could uh, apparently found that there's, uh, in the campaign two, they use uh, Multiple types of loader to load the payload to the payload payload Cobra Strike, and they, we also found some uh, interest. Uh, they just they develop their own hacking tools based on some uh, open source project. So the detail we are talking about in the uh, later in the later session. Okay, so campaign one. So the active time is uh, started from the May two thousand twenty to last February. So uh, that's just as I say, um, it's uh, their target is, is basically a government related uh, organization in Taiwan and also the banking industry in China. So the, this is the um, loader using the campaign one, simultic loader. Uh, we found this loader in the, uh, May 20, uh, 2020. So um, after we checking the code, we, uh, it's apparently uh, this 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 loader is designed to bypass the uh, some current AV or EDR solution, so uh, they it just adopt two different um, technique to to uh, bypass the security product. So the first one is it will trying to unhook uh, the any possible hooks in the NTDLL, and the second part is it will trying to masquerade in the process. Current process with uh, an API we uh, is an uh, update proc thread attribute. Okay. Okay. So, um, so because this this loader is uh, is be used to decrypt and uh, run decrypt the payload and run it in run it. So uh, here is a, a decrypt uh, decryption algorithm used by the simultic loaders. So it's quite simple. Just sub. Uh, doing a sub 10 and using the XOR with the key uh, CC. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's the all in one tool, tool set. So this tool uh, is interesting uh, because in the uh, early phase of the campaign one, um, they didn't use the, the all in one tools like this. But, but in the later phase, uh, they just starting to use, use uh, the tool like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, campaign two. So, active time. Yeah, we just we just talked about is uh, actually last August to this June. So and also um, the the targets is also same as basically same as the campaign one, but uh, but they they just uh, add some new targets is the defense and aviation related uh, organization, and the impact country is uh, not only Taiwan. Uh, it was including the Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Pakistan, and even the Ukraine. Okay, so uh, here's the case because uh, uh, in the previous slide I mentioned uh, they have the two different attack vectors. 
So, but in most cases, the spear fishing attachment. This case is a few uh, few cases we found. Uh, they are trying to using the surface uh, public surfacing application to uh, run and uh, deploy their malware. So, um, uh, based on what the logs we found, uh, we found they, they try they are trying to use uh, the, the IIS service to doing the RCE and. They would deploy downloader and web show, and then just deploy the loader and the hack tools they want. Okay. Okay. So here's a table. So we are just a quick summary of, for the, the overview of the old all of the loader used by the Earth Z. So the first one, Simultic loader. This loader is uh, basically using in uh, uh, in the campaign one. And uh, the rest of the loader is uh, uh, new ver uh, is just developed using in the campaign two. Basically, this loader, the design purpose of this loader is uh, basically same. And uh, the major difference uh, is uh, the algorithm they use to uh, decrypt the payload. Yeah. Okay. So here's a list. Uh, here's a list to show you. Uh, uh, the loader we found, we found, um, and in this table I want to just mention is uh, uh, actually based on the the file name of these files, uh, we could just in, uh, infer the infer uh, which 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 will be the the potential targets of these uh, attackers. Uh, text for example, the first one is just simply is written in simplified uh, Chinese. So these tools might be you just using in the Chinese, Chinese in Chinese China, sorry in China, and uh, oh sorry, uh, take another sample. This one, the fourth one, this file is the, the file name is just written in the Malay. So this file is actually just using to attack the Malaysia, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And uh, also the the drop it decoy files. So. Uh, most of the, actually most of the do, drop it document is uh, password protected, so we could not know the actual content inside. But here's also, uh, here's uh, some uh, uh, some documents is without password protection. So um, so we just give you some example here. Um, basically, uh, as you check the content, you could you could uh, very clearly know the uh, what kind of tar uh, targets you want to. Sorry, you want to uh, attack. So I'll uh, take this for example. Um, probably uh, based on the language and the content. Yeah. So this. Sorry. Okay. So the 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 last the third one the Indonesia. This file is just uh, written in the Indonesian. So it's, as we indicated, uh, this file is using in uh, used to attack the uh, Indonesia. Okay, so um, uh, so in so now we are going to um, talk more details about the loader uh, used by the used in the campaign too. So the first one is the Crux loader. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a custom shellcode loader you uh, we found in last September uh, last October. So there's two types uh, of Crux loader. The first one is uh, it just directly uh, running and. Uh, Decrypt the payload and and run and doing the uh, remote process injection, and the second one is uh, it would try to drop a, a decoy file first and then doing the, and running the Kerbal strike. So for Crux loader, there's a two different um, procedure to uh, load the, the payload. One is to just uh, just read the file, read the payload files, and another one is just uh, Embedded the payload inside the uh, loader, and here and also uh, there was uh, for the decryption algorithm. There's also uh, two different types. So the first one, as you can see, this one is just basically the same as the uh, simultic loader, uh, just used in the campaign one, but uh, in the latter version of Crux loader, it will change it to use the. You're trying to use the LZNT1 
uh, encoding and uh, XOR with the key CC. Yeah. Last one, the big pipe loader. Um, so, so it's also the uh, another is another the show code loader uh, we found last September. So you also have uh, two different types. So the first one is just 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 uh, drop the decoy file and run the code try. That's simple. But uh, recently we found uh, uh, they have a new diff new procedure to running a big pipe loader. It creates a wrapper for they didn't just uh, run in the big pipe loader directly. They just create a wrapper. And wrapper will just also doing the drop the files, and then you will uh, trying to use the side loading technique to launch the big pipe loader, and then code drive was uh, executed. Okay. Okay. So in this slide, I just want to show you uh, why this loader called big pipe loader because uh, um, uh, to this loader will uh, use will rewrite the, uh, the, the payload uh, via the name pipe, and then uh, using the multi-thread uh, multi -thread to doing the whole uh, decryption uh, pro pro process, process. Yeah. Okay. Last one, outloader. So this one is basically the same as the, uh, the previous loader. The, only, the major difference is uh, uh, the he was trying to connect the remote server to download the payload and then decrypt and run. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we have finished the uh, 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 introduction about <laughs> these uh, loaders. In the following session, we are talking more about the hack tools they used. So this tools uh, is also including the uh, Used for the privilege escalation and credential dumping and even uh, and uh, defense evasion. So let's welcome the Harasan to introduce this to you. Okay. Um. Uh. Let us dig more on about the uh, hacking tools. So, uh, in many of the incidents that we observed, uh, we find uh, uh re implementation of the Mimikatz modules as a standalone binary. So, for example, uh, we found a get pass.exe in some incidents, which we, uh, which was uh, our re-implementation of our secure LSA modules, uh, logon passwords command from Mimikatz. So, upon comparing the binary and the source code, on the, we find that the attacker just cut out the required modules source code and compile it as a standalone binary. So, um, it's like uh, one feature for one binary. So we call this technique as a bring your own Mimikatz. So adding to that, uh, we also find that this is .exe or log .dat, which is a re-implementation of our uh, LSA down modules DC sync command, which to perform the DC sync attack. And we also find that Chrome, uh, collect Chrome.exe or dbapi.exe, which is a, a combination of the two modules, uh, LSA down modules, backup key commands, and the dbapi modules, Chrome subcommand. So uh, this is used to dump our Chrome's credentials by using uh, backup key from domain controller. So uh, this binary is designed to be run in the domain controller. And uh, now we also find that xpn.exe, uh, which is our re-implementation of a misc modules memssp command. So this is used to dump our credentials from our security support provider, aka SSP, which is a, a important feature of our Windows for authentication. So our, actually, this is not a copy from the Mimikatz, but uh, they copied from the security researchers, uh, aka XPN implementation. So our re-implementation of this kind of open source hacking tools, such as the Mimikatz, is being quite common among the Red Team community because um, it's easy to reduce the chance to get detected. Okay, so and adding to that, uh, we find unique hacking tools for uh, anti-AV or anti-EDR by an abusing vulnerable driver, uh, which we call proc burner and uh, AV burner. So these two hacking tools has a, a different feature for each, but uh, they use the uh, same technique behind it. So both tools are uh, abused on vulnerable driver named rtcore64.sys, uh, which is shipped as a component of our afterburner, on afterburner products from our MSI. So in 2019, 
uh, the driver was assigned a CVE, which vulnerability allows users to read or write any arbitrary address of uh, uh, any ad arbitrary address, including uh, corner spaces. So actually, they already patched, so the, and the, the vulnerability itself is quite looks old. But um, the problem here is that um, the old version of vulnerable driver has a valid signature yet. So the attacker uh, delivers the old version of driver into the victim machine and to abuse for some um, malicious purposes, such as um, anti-AV or anti-EDL. So uh, this technique is known as uh, bring your own vulnerable driver, aka BYOVD. So uh, it's quite interesting that APT operators employs this technique to bypass the AV or EDL because this is quite common among uh, cyber criminals, especially our uh, ransomware operators. But uh, um, it's quite rare for the um, among the APT operators to adopt these uh, techniques. So um, okay, um, let me introduce the details of these uh, unique hacking tools. So first, the proc banner. The simply put, the proc banner is our, the process terminator. So this tool uses a vulnerable RT core 64.sys to force patch the handle table entry structures, uh, granted access bits field uh, with the process all access value. So on the handle table entry is a common object and uh, the granted access bits field contains the value of our access permission of the, some specific handle. So the changing the value of the granted access bits means that it tries to forcibly change the access permission of the target process. But um, the problem here is that the handle table entry structure is stored in the corner space, which is not accessible from the user space. So um, how it could be possible? So uh, before that, uh, I'm going to explain under the environment on the uh, Windows 10 uh, 20 H2 64-bit version because the offset of the structure will be different for each Windows build version. So, and uh, the attacker must install the vulnerable driver before running the probe banner. Okay, so uh, let's break it down. So the, first, the probe banner opens the target process with the process clearly limited information, which is quite a low privilege. And then uh, it receives the handle of the target process. So for example, in this case, we got the 0x1DA handle. And then the probe banner tried to get the address of the uh, handle table entry object of the target handle by tracking back from the e-process object. Okay. Uh, this one. So the e-process object is a con object. So the probe banner uses our on RT core 64.sys to get the address of e-process object. Then tracking down the field in the structure. The e-process object has a object table field which has a pointer to the another structure. And this structure has a table called field that has a pointer to the head of a, a handle table entry array. So uh, this array is a pointer table to the existing handles. Then we can get the index of the target handles by calculating uh, based on the target handle, like this one. So uh, we got the handle ID 0x1dh, and just on our to be right shift and multiply 16 times, so we get that index. So now we get the address of the target handle of the uh, handle table entry structure. So then the probe banner sends our IOCDA request to our vulnerable RT core 6.0.sys to mask the handle table entries, granted access bits to, uh, with the process all access. In this case, it's a Zerex 1 FFFFF. So it's patched. So on um, the handle, uh, against the target process is all access, so we can do whatever we want. So the probe banner just called the terminate process to terminate the process. So um, it's available on the, even if the target process is protected by some on um, the self protection or something. So it could be on um, terminated by this technique. So this is how the probe banner works. The next is a uh, heavy banner. Uh, this is a uh, simply put on the corner cobalt remover. So it, uses a, also, it also uses a vulnerable driver, RT Core 64.sys, to remove the kernel callback routine and to unregister, especially AV or EDR monitoring. So uh, what is a kernel callback? So the uh, kernel callback is a Windows OS mechanism to allow drivers, including AV drivers, 
on to register some callback routines to receive some notification over some certain event. So, for example, the uh, process creation or threat creation or registry creation, something like that. So, uh, first, uh, let me show you how this kernel callback works. So, the NTOS kernel uh, provides several API for drivers to register on callback for each event. For example, for monitoring process creation, the PS set create process notify routine is exported. So, uh, this API receives a function pointer to invoke when any process is created. So, when the PS set create process notify routine is called, it calls another API, PSP set create process notify routine. So, the prefix is a bit different. And uh, uh, in this function, Windows kernel registers the given callback function at the end of the callback array named PSP create process notify routine. So every name is similar, so it's confusing. And after this, the, uh, when any process is created, uh, Windows kernel anomalies this table to find uh, the callback function to get invoked. So this is how kernel callback works. So uh, let me uh, go through how the every, every one works. So in, in this case, uh, I will show you how Every burner unregister the process creation because every burner has a feature to unregister the process creation, author creation, and the image loading. But in this case, I will show you how they um, bypass the process creation in the Windows OS 10 build 2004. Okay, so on. Um, and first, um, every burner try to get the address of PSP set create process notify routine API and I will create the driver API, which is exported by the NTOS kernel. Then uh, it searches some specific sequence bytes like this. So this sequence bytes is uh, actually the instruction um, that is used in the PSP create process notify routine. And we can, get, we can find the address of the PSP create process notify routine before, just, just before the target instruction here. So it's like a are running the pattern searching by themselves. So, and we, and, uh, so we can get the address of this uh, important uh, structures. Now uh, let's get uh, uh, yeah important address. And then the PSP create process notify routine, uh, this one is a table of the callback function that contains some custom pointers to our another structure, ex callback routine block ob object. Uh, which address can be calculated by removing the last four bits of the pointer. So just do the math. We can get the address of the target on callback address. So the ex callback routine block structure has a function field at offset 0 x 8, uh, which contains a pointer to the callback function. So for example, uh, in this case, um, this function field has a pointer to the sum function inside a driver.sys, which is a legitimate driver. So then uh, it gets the driver's fire path that callback's function belongs to and examine if the driver fire path property, fire property has uh, some target string, for example, the trend or Microsoft or whatever you want to unregister. Then so if it founds the every runner overwrites the pointer with the null here, so th which result in removing the kernel callback registration. So this is how the AV Verner works. So uh, actually, these techniques are not unique on, among the AV Verner and the Proc Verner. This is, uh, we could find on um, similar implementation on the GitHub, but uh, upon comparing those tools and the public, uh, public ones, uh, this attacker uh, tried to implement more flexibility or they support on um, more versions of uh, Windows uh, than others. So uh, we think they are uh, not just a copycat. They are, they are trying to keep updating their own tools. Okay. So on the process of attribution, now let's go to the uh, attribution section. So as we already mentioned, um, uh, we, uh, we believe that on Earth Longi is uh, related to or is a subgroup of uh, ABD41 uh, based on some reasons. The one is the victimology and the uh, copper strike metadata overlap and the code similarity of the loaders and the TDP overlaps. But uh, on, we're still unclear as to how they collaborate with each other. They may be the subgroup of APT41 or they may be just sharing the tools or TDPs or sharing the members for each other. 
Okay, so um, let me introduce how we think. So the victimology, so in the campaign number one, the main target was Taiwan. In the campaign number two, the main targets were on East or Southeast Asia, but they also targeting the geopolitically critical countries, including Pakistan and Ukraine. So uh, this indicates that the, the attacker has uh, on geopolitical interests in these areas. So um, this are, is uh, consistent with the existing APD-41s and its own uh, related groups. And uh, before talking about Cobalt Strike metadata overlap, um, we need to understand some artifacts in the Cobalt Strike. So um, the, the, the one is a uh, public key. The public key is the RSC public key to encrypt the session, session metadata on the CNC communication by the Cobalt Strike. So uh, this key is generated from the .cobaltstrike.beacon keys file, which is generated in the working directly or if it doesn't exist when um, someone log on to the team server. So the important thing is that a matching public key means that the two different payloads possibly came from the same team server. But uh, there's an exception. So or someone, uh, some uh, Cobalt Strike is leaked or cracked or someone just copied the whole directly to the another machine or another directly. So in this case, um, resulted in the matching the public key. Okay. So the second one is a watermark. That this is a unique four byte value embedded in Beacon. And the watermark is generated from the Cobalt Strike auth file, uh, which is a config file used to check if the license is, is valid or is not expired. The watermark will be changed when the version is updated. So the important thing here is a matching watermark means that two different payloads uh, possibly came from the same team server. So there's also an exception. Uh, leaked cracked cover strike can be our same watermark. Okay. So um, to understand the cover strike operation, let me give you some example. So for example, um, some multiple operators shares on uh, some cover strike license, how it goes. So there's the two operator, operator A and operator B, and uh, uh, they are sharing the same license, but um, are, they are working a different directly or they are using a different machine. So the, the beacon key will be the different for each. So then uh, they generated a beacon. So in this case, the watermark uh, will be the same for each because they are sharing the licenses. But um, the public key will be the different because they are different they're using the different public key, uh, beacon keys. So like this, okay? So now let's the connecting the dots. So we analyzed the Cobalt Strike observed in campaign number two. Then we found that all of, the, all of them shares the uh, same watermark, but um, different public key as shown this. <clears throat> there, so this means that there might be uh, some multiple operators for each operations. Uh, but, but sharing same license across the campaign. Maybe the someone's targeting on Thailand for some operation and some other one targeting the Taiwan for some operation. But the, they're sharing the same license, but the, they're using different directly or machine or something. Okay, so, and then uh, upon checking on the past report, uh, we found that watermark 4263 blah blah and uh, public key MD5 uh, 9 EE 3 e blah blah um, are used by the ARF Baku, which is reported by us, and the group CC, which is reported by Team T5. And both on um, third actor is uh, believed to be a subgroup of uh, APD 41. Okay, so uh, this shows that the left one shows that ARF Baku um, are using the same watermark, and the right one shows by on um, Team T5 that they are using the same watermark and the same public key, MD5. So uh, this is the one of the evidence that we think uh, they might link to the APD41. Okay, so and uh, adding to that, we found some overlaps with the tools and the TTPs of uh, Group CC. So first, the loaders used by the Group CC and uh, used, uh, loaders used by in this campaign number one and campaign number two implemented as the same routine to decrypt the payloads, the uh, sub Xerox A and uh, XO is their Xerox CC. So uh, actually, to be honest, um, this algorithm is not that unique, but uh, we think it's still noteworthy. 
n. And uh, also, upon examining the Cobalt Strike profile and the Cobalt Strike in the group CC, uh, used, by Cobalt, uh, used by the group CC, and the Cobalt Strike um, loaded by a big pipe loader uh, used in the campaign number two, uh, tries to hide a CNC server by abusing fastly CDN like this. So they are using the same TTP to um, hide a CNC servers. So um, based on the ad hoc that we have shown, we believe with the confidence that the Earth long G should be the group CC. And, uh, and since the group CC is believed to be a subgroup of APT41, we also think that Earth long G is probably a subgroup of uh, APT41 or collaborating or sharing tools or TDPs with APT41. Okay, so at last, uh, let me get summarized. So Earth long G has been operating some multiple oper uh, campaign targeting several industries, mainly on APAC regions. And Earth long G is uh, very familiar with the red teaming techniques as we've shown. So actually this uh, looks like they're playing some of the hack the box in the real world. The hack the box is an uh, uh, online platform, training platform for pen testers. So actually the title of the hack the real box comes from here, okay? And uh, Earth long G could be uh, related to uh, uh, APT41. So because uh, they are using the same TDPs on with the ones that are used by the APT41 known subgroups, and that they possibly sharing the Cobalt Strike licenses. Okay. And also, at, at last, uh, we put some challenges that we feel during the research, because um, the attribution is getting more and more complex, especially the APT41, because the thread actors are not even a monolithic or static group anymore. We think that the thread actors are sharing their own tools and TDPs each other, or sometimes the members in the thread actors are going out or going, coming in, and uh, they are changing the members inside it. So just so the attribution based on the just single artifact is quite um, are dangerous. So we have to be more careful on the attribution, especially the APD41. So uh, this is all. So um, uh, we hope our research will help your research or protect your network. And you can see the IRCs on the appendix in the appendix. So uh, thank you so much. Shishi. OK, so I think we still have time to have some questions. Um, uh, uh, we all already have some questions in the online uh, in our yeah, Slido. Uh, but I, I want to leave the, the chance first to the on-site audience. Uh, 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 Um, this is Judy. I want to ask the watermark about the Cobalt Strike watermark. So is that watermark a pirated version or leak version or, or is it only used by... Because you, you, you use this watermark to um, kind of find the relationship between mm -hmm. group CC and uh, this uh, Earth, uh, this group. So, so they are... Um, I, I mean, how many other... Is there any other... Actors leveraging the same uh, watermark uh, with, uh, with this group. Thank you. Thank you. On our, upon our investigation, uh, we did not observe any other three actors using the same on watermark. So I think this watermark is uh, exclusive. Thank you. So does this watermark is come from a leaks uh, couple strike or is uh, a licensed one? Uh, I think this is a valid license. It's not leaked because it's not any other three actors using this one. So we believe this is our um, so valid one. It's a special one. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, you ask my question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, there uh, are uh, okay, okay. Hey, Thank you for the presentation. My name is James. Um, so my question is, you commented uh, that you might be a subgroup of APT41. 
with high confidence, but we all know 41 has been attributed to the PRC government. So can you comment more on how that intersects with this group targeting assets in the PRC? I'm not very really, uh, asking you a question. Could you please? Yeah, so. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. So, um, APT41 has been attributed to the, as a state sponsor group yeah. from the PRC. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that this group also targets the um, banking industry in China. Uh, so, oh, oh, I see. can you comment on that more? Like, what are your thoughts behind that? Yeah, uh, yeah but, um, okay. Okay, uh, for this uh, for this question is a good question actually, and because uh, in actually in our uh, investigation uh, we found that uh, they might have some habits to I mean we would consider it as a uh, a pen test to the, uh, the 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 sectors in the in the China yeah. But, um, because uh, uh, actually, the if you uh, check in the uh, the some information behind the APT41, actually they are related to some uh, some red team companies. So uh, we're considering as uh, they will try they will keep trying to um, doing the doing doing the uh, pen test to the, the sectors in the China in the dark. Yeah, just don't don't just. Don't, they, they don't just uh, tell you, uh, wow, we are going to do in a red team. They just do it and trying to find out uh, if you, you, are, uh, you, are, you, are, you are in the vulnerable exploit in your environments. Yeah, something that I, I would I'll say is something like that. That's, uh, that's what, what we uh, have, inform based on what, what we have information. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, the last year the team T5 on uh, reviewed on I think this in the team hit uh, hit client they are they are mentioning about our uh, the HW operation, which is uh, on operated by Chinese government. Are uh, maybe the Chinese government asks some security on companies to test their own the uh, important infrastructure, including banking or infrastructure whatever. So we believe that the attacking against the banking industry in the China is a part of the HW operation or something like that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So I want to leave the last question for myself. <laughs> Sorry, if you have a question, you can still come to uh, final speaker later. Yes, uh, because in the, F, uh, in the last, uh, next session, we will have the other research team from Tremicro is also to present the uh, group called Earth Luska. Can you comment up about the difference between uh, the group you, are, uh, you analyze and the Earth Luska? Uh, um, I, th I think uh, uh, everyone could just listen the the, Earth Luska, the demo <laughs> details in the Earth Luska session. It's also on, I would say it's a great session actually. Yeah, so. I think everyone could just join that session to, and listen to uh, Joseph uh, speaking. Yeah. Okay, fine. I, I think that's why we designed the session as a lot. We want to put several three intelligence papers together so we can continue to listen to this talk. Okay, now we have a little bit of time to go to this point. There are actually some questions that you want to ask. You can directly go to the stage and talk to the speaker. 好，那我们这场筛选就到这边呃结束，那谢谢大家参与。